Hello guys, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Sir Jeff and welcome to Math N2 TV. In this three-part video, you will learn how to illustrate quadratic equations, solve quadratic equations by extracting square roots, factoring, completing the square, and using the quadratic formula. And also, you will learn how to characterize the roots of a quadratic equation using the discriminant. So, let's start. But before that, let me share with you words to inspire by Galileo Galilei. So mathematics is the language in which God has written the universe. What Galileo meant here was, language of mathematics is the key to understand nature. It is with the language of math that we can express precise relationships between measured quantities. Well, as we all know, everything we do is related to math. So, come on, let's start our lesson. So, quadratic equations in one variable. So, a quadratic equation in one variable is an equation of degree 2. The standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. Where a, b, and c are real numbers and a is not equal to 0. When we say real numbers, those are numbers that are positive, negative, or 0. Did you know that a quadratic equation is an equation in which the highest power of the variable is 2? So for example, quadratic equation. Okay. The standard form for quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c that is equal to 0. Okay, so again, your a, b, and c are real numbers and a must not be equal to 0. Okay, so let's have some example. Say example number 1. Let's say I have here 5x squared plus 3x is equals to 7. So, what can you say about the first example? Okay. So, the first example is not written in the standard form. So, first thing we need to do is we need to make this equation in a standard form. So, how we're going to do that? We simply transpose okay, the constant term to the other side of the equation. So that becomes 5x squared plus 3x. Since this is positive, okay, so it will become minus 7. That is equal to 0. So this is now in the standard form. So we can now determine the values for a, b, and c. So for a, we have 5. For B, yes, you are correct, that is 3. And for C, that is equals to negative 7. So let's have another example. This will be our example number 2. So let's say we have 2x squared is equals to negative 8x. Okay, so the first thing we notice is that the given is not in the standard form. Make it in the standard form. So the right side of the equation, which is negative 8x, so we need to transpose that to the other side of the equation. So that becomes 2x squared. Since this is negative, so it will become positive. So you just interchange the sign. Okay once you transpose to the other side. So that becomes positive 8x. Then that makes it equal now to 0. So the highest um, power of the variable x is 2. So we can say this is a quadratic equation. So let's determine the values for a, b, and c. Okay, so for a, we have obviously that is 2. For b, that is 8. 
Okay. So how about for C? Okay, as you can see, okay, based from the standard form, okay, so that is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. So as you can see, there's no value for c. So you have your a, you have your b, but definitely you don't have a value for c. So that means your c is equal to zero. Okay, so that's how you illustrate and determine the values of a, b, and C. Okay? There are several ways in solving quadratic equations. So, here are the four steps or ways in solving quadratic equations. First is extracting square roots, factoring, completing the square, and by using the quadratic formula. In this video, we will just going to focus on extracting square roots. Okay? So, let's proceed. Solving quadratic equations by extracting square roots. So, in solving quadratic equations by extracting square roots, we need to use the square root property. So, what is a square root property? So, if x squared is equals to n and n is greater than 0, then x is equals to square root of n or x is equals to negative square root of n. As you can see, so if we're going to take the square root of a positive number n, okay, so that means we have two answers. And that is the positive square root of n and the negative square root of n. So we're just going to apply square root property for us to solve quadratic equations by extracting square roots. So let's have some examples. Extracting square roots. Sub example number one. Okay. So for our first example, let's say we have x squared minus 25 that is equal to zero. So the first thing we need to know is the given a quadratic equation. So by simply applying the definition of the quadratic equation so the highest power of the variable x is 2 so therefore this is a quadratic equation so how are you going to apply the squared property so the first step we need to do is to transpose the constant term negative 25 to the other side of the equation so we're just going to separate the variable to the left side and constant term on the right side. So let me just give you a guide. So again, left side is the variable that is equal to the constant. Okay. So, so by transposing, so we have x squared equals to 25. So, we're just going to change the sign, okay, of the constant. So, since we already separate the variable and the constant, we now take the square root of both sides, okay? So, I'm just going to take the square root of both sides, okay? So, square root of x squared, okay, so that is basically x, okay? So that is equal to, again, square root of 25, that gives us two answers. That is the positive, negative, or plus or minus 5. Okay. So this will be our final answer. Okay. So let's check if our answer is correct. So for checking, okay. So we simply substitute the value of x in the given quadratic equation. So that becomes x squared minus 25 equals to 0. So that becomes 5 squared minus 25. Is that equal to 0? So what is 5 squared? Okay, 5 squared is 25. Okay, minus 25 
that is that equal to zero well obviously 25 minus 25 that is zero okay so that makes it equal to zero so our first answer which is positive 5 is correct okay so let's try another one let's try our other answer so let's have x squared minus 25 equals to zero so let's substitute negative 5 okay so let's have negative 5 squared minus 25 that is equal to 0. So what is negative 5 squared or simply negative 5 times negative 5? So if we multiply both negative numbers, it gives us a positive number, correct? So that makes it 25 minus 25 equals to 0. So is that equal to 0? 25 minus 25, okay, so that is 0, okay, so... That is now equal to 0. So, by this, we can now say that the answer x is equal to plus or minus 5 is correct. Okay? So, it's example number 2. Let's have uh, x squared minus 8 equals to 0. Okay, as you can see, the given is already in a quadratic equation and in standard form so because the highest variable or highest power of the variable is 2 so the next thing we need to do is we simply okay transpose negative 8 to the other side of the equation and that becomes x squared is equals to 8 okay and then the next thing we will going to do is we're going to take the square root of both sides so simply cancel square root and squared so we have x that is equal to now what is square root of 8 okay so square root of 8 can be written as okay can also be written as square root of 4 times 2 okay so 4 times 2 is 8 so it can be written as a product of 4 and 2 and we all know that according to the law of radicals, we can simply separate this. So, we have square root of 4 times square root of 2. Okay. So, we all know that square root of 4, that gives us what? Okay. So, correct. That gives us positive, negative, negative. 2 then just copy this one square root of 2 okay so our final answer will be plus or minus 2 square root of 2 okay so that will be our final answer and for checking purposes that will be left as your exercise so example number 3 let's try to solve this one let's have uh, 2x squared plus 3 is equals to 39. Okay. So, the first thing we need to know is, is this a quadratic equation? And if yes, is this in the standard form? Okay. So, upon checking, okay, the highest power of the variable is 2. Therefore, this is obviously a quadratic equation. Okay. But, if you're going to ask me if, is this in the standard form, we could see that there are two constants, okay? So, you have positive 3 here and positive 39. As you can recall, I said that we need to separate the variable and the constant. So, that becomes variable must be equal to constant, okay? So, what we're going to do is we need to transpose this positive 3 to the other side of the equation. So, that becomes 2x squared equals to 39. So, since this is plus 3, it will become minus 3. Okay. So, 2x squared, that is equal to 39 minus 3. That gives us 36. Okay, can we now take the square root of both sides? You can see that you still have a coefficient for x squared. So again, 
we need to um we need to divide both sides of the equations by 2 in order for us to cancel the coefficient here so since we have 2 divided by 2 that is simply 1 so we just simply cancel it out okay so that gives us x squared is equals to 36 divided by 2 that gives us 18 okay 18 and then since our variable does not have any numerical coefficient so we can simply take the square root of both sides so simply cancel square root and squared okay so we are left with x is equals to okay again square root of 18 can be written as square root of 9 times 2 and according to law of radicals we can separate this into square root of 9 times square root of 2 so square root of 9 yes as we all know that is plus minus 3 let's copy the remaining square root of 2 okay so our final answer will be plus or minus 3 square root of 2 example number 4 okay so what if you are asked to solve for this could um quadratic equation say we have here quantity x plus 4 squared is equals to 1 so the first thing that will obviously come to our mind is that if i have a square here we can easily take the square root of both sides in order for us to cancel the square root and the squared okay so that gives us x plus 4 is equal to what is square root of 1 well obviously square root of 1 gives us a plus minus 1 okay so but this is not the final answer yet so what we're going to do is to we need to transpose this constant to the other side of the equation so that gives us x is equals to say since this is positive 4 it will become negative 4 plus minus 1 so by separating okay so we have x equals to negative 4 plus 1 and we have x is equals to negative 4 minus 1 so what is negative 4 plus 1 so that is equals to negative 3 and how about negative 4 minus 1 okay that gives us negative 5 so our final answers are x is equals to negative 3 and x equals to negative 5. That's the end of our um, examples for solving quadratic equations by extracting square roots. So I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.